take four. Nurse Crackface. Nurse Crackface. Nurse Crackface. Can I speak to these lovely people about World Bipolar Day? No, 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 no. Keep, keep, keep back. Keep back. Keep back. Back. Back, you insane bitch. Back. No, stay there. No, stay there. No, no, don't sneeze on me. No, don't. Don't. I don't want your fucking germs. Stay, 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 stay two feet away from me. Thank you. So, Nurse Crackface, can I talk to these lovely people on YouTube about World by Bowling Day? Right, okay, so, how long have I got? About 40 minutes. 40, 50 minutes, half an hour? So no more than 50 minutes. Right, okay. Thank you, Nurse Crackface. Thank you. Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to John's Insane Asylum. So, yeah, I hope everyone is doing well in this current climate that we're in. This really frustrating situation we're in with the coronavirus. <gasps> Corona! Oh, excuse me. So, yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos because I haven't felt... Uh, I haven't felt the need or motivated, I should say, to do a talking video. I, I mainly wanted to experiment doing different things. So, so yeah, today, everyone... Is World Bipolar Day. Yes, World Bipolar Day. So, I was thinking for a while to do or to talk about uh, basically my basically different um, events that defied my 20s because because in a couple of months time I will be 30 which I'm not looking forward to at all you know it's been daunting on me for the last probably since probably the last two years to be honest and I just hope that my 30s will be less stressful than my 20s, you know, and, and I was thinking about it the other day, I was thinking about if I if time travel did exist and I could go back to the beginning to the beginning of my twenties as I am now or as I reach thirty I would probably I know it's hindsight and hindsight is is a very it's a very conflicting sort of philosophy or what should what uh what what would have happened if that happened what if that didn't happen yada 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 hindsight you know 2020 vision can be very conflicting but if i was like i am now and i could go back to the beginning of my 20s i'd probably just give my younger self a piece of advice. Not necessarily say to him, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, you gotta, you can't do this, you can't do that." Because it's not, you know, like I said, like I said, to change, you can't really change. Um, 
what you've done, decisions you've made and, and, just, and the things you've done. You can't really change it. You know, I always say you can't change the past. You can't change the past. But you can you can influence your future. You know, I always say that. You know, because you can't hold you can't hold on to regret. You really can't hold on to the regret because it will eat you up inside. Not just physically, but emotionally, it will eat. It will fucking eat you up. It will. And you can't hold on to regret and things you've and things you've done that are bad. I mean, I've done some fucking bad things, you know. But you, you, as you get older, you you learn from you learn from your mistakes, or you try to learn from your mistakes, you know. But uh, as I was saying. If you know, if I could go back in a time, if time, if time, if time travel existed starting from today, I would go back to see my younger self, and I will say, and I would say to him, "It's going to be a very bumpy ride, but you will get through it. You'll still be here." You know, that's 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 the that's the advice I would give to my younger self. You know, so yeah, so I'm gonna talk about some of my um, moments that defied my twenties. So I'm gonna probably start with my college years. So, so having a youth worker, having a youth worker in college, we'll start off. We'll start off with that. So that was particularly very important because it was my first taste of having someone. To talk to, uh, with, to talk about my problems, because that was that because at that particular time didn't really didn't really have anyone to talk about to talk about my problems, you know, because at that time, particularly my college years, that's where my undiagnosed bipolar started to really. Started really to bubble up to, up to the surface, and you couldn't really talk to anyone about it. You couldn't I couldn't talk to my parents about it, and there was a lot of bottled up um, feeling inside, and and that's the worst fucking thing you can do is bottling your emotions up. You you know it's not it's not it's not good. You know, you've got to have somebody to talk to. You know, even if it's just, even if it's just the tiniest fucking problem. If you can get it off your chest with somebody, you know, it's not going to solve the problem. But it sort of feels like if somebody's listening to you, you know, without judging you, then you do feel better in yourself. So at that time, when I was in Newport College, you know, basically, just basically a loner, didn't really talk to anyone, just just basically went to the Learning Resource Centre and just basically, just basically, basically isolating myself from people. Felt feeling really depressed and getting into arguments with 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 certain teachers. I remember getting into a big argument with the English teacher just for just for stupid 
fucking shit she would say. It's like, oh, Gary Newman. Gary Newman. He's a one eight wonder. Why would you read a book about a one eight wonder? And I'm thinking... I mean, I'm thinking this, that's a very... Not a very nice thing to say to somebody that... Because Gary Newman, to me, is fucking... To me, he's fucking God. He's my fucking religion. He's my God. He's my religion. And I was like... What the fuck? And I, and I was like, wouldn't it wonder? Wouldn't it wonder? So wouldn't it wonder in the USA? I'm not, I'm not denying that. You know, because Cars was a big song back in, back in 98, 1980. I mean, when he, when he performed that on Saturday Night Live, you know, probably one of the most brilliant perform, brilliant music performances on that fucking show. It was like, oh, Gary Newman, he's the one it wonder. And I'm thinking... I can name fucking ten fucking top top twenty hits he fucking had. Should we name them now? Should we name them now to get it out of my fucking system? Right, cars, complex, we are glass. I die, you die. This wreckage. Um. We take mystery to bed. She's got claws. Was sister surprised? I think sister surprise. And crazier. And I can't think of the last one. The last one. Oh, our friends electric. See, I named ten there. So always he's the one it wonder. And just did not get on with her until she was very very aggressive. I found her I found her, her attitude to be very aggressive. Very aggressive and basically just didn't give a sh basically had a very take it or leave it approach. You know, that you can, you know, you can you can tell that some teachers are very are very passionate. About their job, you know, you can you can tell, you can tell that they want to help, help you get better grades. You know, you can you can you can feel it, you can see it, you can feel it. But with her, with the English teacher, it was it, it was like you could just tell her, her heart wasn't in it. And then we get into constant. Constant disagreements all the time in class. You know, it was just. She just. And then it just got to a. Got to a boiling point. And I just basically said to her first, I said, You're a shit teacher. And she didn't. <laughs> you should have seen her fucking face when I said that. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. She fucking stole me and said, Oh, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the head fucking Ooh, I'm gonna get the head fucking uh, teacher teach the head of department head of my department where we're going to, to tell you off. Oh. I mean that and then potentially that could have got that could have got fucking worse. That could have been I could have ended up a lot worse to be honest, but but luckily, I had the history teacher. Kathy Lutie asked you, f fucking legend. If you're watching, you're a fucking legend. Absolute legend. Probably probably the best teacher I ever had, ever. You know, she, she was a very caring, very caring, very enthusiastic teacher you know she she generally wanted to help you get better grades and she and she and she had like she had like she had a multitude of different fucking laughs for each fucking day you know Monday would be <laughs> Tuesday would be <laughs> Wednesday would be <laughs> Thursday would be ha 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 ha
Oh, she was fucking awesome. You know, she, re she, you know, if you ever had a problem, you know, she would fucking you. She, she, she could, she could tell by your body language because I'm very, I, I, because I think I'm very expressive in my body language. You know, if you know if I'm fucking really angry or moody, because you, because my body language. She would often go, well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you today? And and, and, and I would often confide in her. You know, about... Because I didn't was getting on with my dad at the fucking time, so I'd be fucking bitching about him to her. You know, at that time. You know, and... Just... And... And it was, it was actually your idea to have a youth worker... So I had my I started to see a youth worker for the last it was the last it was the last definitely the last year yeah, it was the last year of college I started to see a youth worker. And basically you just talked about my family history for the and that was the first time I actually talked to somebody about it. About, you know, what had happened, you know, the trauma of losing my nan at eleven and and the uh, high school years talking about that, and um, and then I ended up with like a um, I think it was a a counselor, a trainee trainee counselor. Yeah, and he was really, and he and he gave me, I can't remember his fucking name because I I've had too many fucking. I've had too many fucking sledgehammer shots in the head and too much fucking lemsips and cocaine. But, um, I can remember his name. I vaguely, vaguely remember, vaguely, I can vaguely picture what he looked like. But, but, uh, oh, excuse me. But, um, but I can remember a piece of advice that he gave me. He said, focus on the positives and don't focus on the negatives. Which probably which probably should be a slogan for, men, for anyone that suffers with mental health. Focus on the positives. Don't dwell on the negatives. And I know I do. I know I, know I dwell on the negatives. Sometimes, and it can be, and it can hurt you, you know, physically and mentally. If you if you dwell on the negatives and dwell on things that happened, that really traumatic things happened in the past, you know, you've got to focus on the positives. Trust me, you'll feel better for it. You know, there are, you know, because there are positive things. You know. And you need to, and you basically you need to fucking concentrate on them. So yeah, so that was. So what else? Working. Well, another uh, defining uh, moment in my twenties was working for the Salvation Army. So yeah, I started working there when I was 19, and I finished, um, started there 2009, and I think I left there, must have been the spring of 2012, so I did two and a half years of voluntary work for the Salvation Army, and, and I got nothing but beautiful Beautiful memories, beautiful heartwarming memories of the Newport Salvation Army. You know, just, just incredible, just, just incredible, just incredible bunch of people there. You know, I mean, I'm not a religious, I'm not a religious person by any means, but um, uh, to me, in a lot of ways, it, it, going there, working there. And getting to know the people there, it was like having a, it was like having an extended family. 
to be honest. It was just, 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 it was just very, for a while anyway, it, it had a very, um, lively, um, very lively, very positive atmosphere, a lot of positive vibes, you know, everyone, most people, most of us got on with each other, and we just, you know, were, you know, did, did our work, and just great, and, and I met my friend, Steve there, you know, and it took a while, uh, with me, with people, it did take, it did take a while, but I did manage, it did, I did manage to open up, and make a new, make a friend because at that time didn't really have friends. All my friends are fucking from high school, and it's like you know they, you know they lead their own lives. After high school, you lose contact with them, and they're leading their own. They're literally leading their own lives. They start in families, and to be honest, and they haven't got time. To be f hanging around, hanging around with old old friends, really, you know. But um, so yeah, I met my friend Steve. Steve there. It took it took. I mean, he was. I think he was. He was open with me. It took a while for me to get to really get to talk to him, really. But um, we did. We did. We did bond, I think, with with the PlayStation One because somebody in the Salvation Army gate uh, donated a donated a PS One to him, and and I remember going to Emily's house the first the, the very first time, and he had the PS One, and of course PS One to me, that's that's my fucking console of all consoles, that's my ultimate console, you know, and just. Bonding with that and and play and playing uh, fucking Duke Nukem, <laughs> fucking he cracked up with the first level, with the fucking uh, the cinema show in the porn film. It was like, it was like, what fresh, mutated pigs watching a porn flick. This is crazy. <laughs> you know those were his, those were the exact words, honey. So yeah, we got to. Got to make a new friend, and it basically and it helped. It did for a while. It did in a way help my mental health because it got it, it was a routine. You know, I would go in about how many days? I go in about three days a week. I do about about four or five hours just working in as in a just kitchen assistant and um, it really did help because having a routine is very important is very important in mental health very important and I had, and I had nicknames for everyone I had nicknames for everyone like Marge the till the till operator because she was a fan of Margaret Thatcher <gasps> Yeah, big fan of Margaret Thatcher. So I used to call her the the Iron Lady. I used to go, the Iron Lady. Yeah, I used to go, Those with baby breath, waiting for that popular media catchphrase, the U-turn. I only have one thing to say. You turn if you want to. The lady's not returning. And she could, she'd fucking laugh. I said, God damn fucking Tory. And Doug would be like, Doug, Doug the manager would be like, No, Jonathan, you mustn't swear. Okay, you mustn't swear. You <laughs> remember the first time, first couple of times I met Doug, he was like, No, then, Jonathan, you mustn't swear. Try to, try to, try to use alternative swear words if you can. Like, oh, oh, crackers, or oh, 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 um, oh, oh, nippy, naughty nappies, or something like that. 
you mustn't swear. You mustn't swear. And it'd go over my head. Because I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, this dishwasher is shit. I remember shouting at once and everyone looked at me. Went, everyone looked at me and Doug just went, oh God, what's wrong now? But yeah, nicknames for everyone. So Doug, the manager, was... Well, he looked like Norman Tebbit, so... Well, he looks like Norman Tebbit. He's still around. He looked like Norman Tebbit. So I go, Norman! Norman! And you go, hello! You know, his, his popular cat, his popular catchphrase was, Hello, young man! How are you today? Hello, young man! Hello, young man! Hello! Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I don't see Madge, Iron Lady, Norman, uh, the Captain. What's the caller? Captain Kirk. What's the caller? Captain Kirk. And I used to call, I used to call the, I, it was a, a Nigerian woman called Opie. She, used, she worked there for a while. Yeah, we used to tease all the women in there. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Naughty. Naughty, naughty. Very naughty teasing all the women, you naughty man. Nah. So, yeah, I used to call her the dragon. I used to see, I used to go, Dragon! When you fight, when you fart, fire come out of your ass. And she go, ha, 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 ha. Oi, you behave. Oi, you Behave. And I'm like, no, not behaving. I know you naughty. So, yeah, really funny. Some of the some of the characters used to work here. Eh? Just brilliant. So yeah, I met my friend Steve from there and Doug the manager. Fucking, he helped me a lot. You know, in fact, he, in fact, he was the first guy to to actually. Put me on the on the road to getting diagnosed with bipolar. Now, I never asked him to say this or influence him in any way. But he was the first. He, I remember. I can't remember. There was an incident. I think there was an incident with me and the assistant manager or something. I can't remember. He was I. I arguing over some stupid and trivial but um so I had like a dis I had a disagreement with the assistant manager and I think I think it was like a day later a Doug asked me to come into his office and I thought well he's gonna get rid of me. I was prepared I was prepared for him to say um uh, for him to say oh John Jonathan I can't have you work here no more. But um but he was like, Jonathan, I've I've known you for a couple of months now. You know, because he'd see he would see my mood. You know, he would see my moves go up and down, and and the way, and just the way, just the way he used to act, and, inter and the way he interacted with people. He was like, I, Jonathan, I think you've got bipolar. He was like, I'm no, I'm no expert, you know, I'm no expert, but I think you've got bipolar. So I said, okay, because at that time, bipolar, it was bipolar was a new, was a new, was a new word that I hadn't really understood. I really, I really understood, because at that time, mental health at that time. I had incredible, I think I had incredible lack, incredible lack of insight to it. You know, I just thought, I was me and that was it, you know, that's, that's how I, that's how I thought. I, I mean, I, then again, I knew having suicidal thoughts was, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't quite, wasn't, um, wasn't, um, kosher and right I didn't think that was right but other than that I just thought that's just the way I was and Doug and of course Doug would tell me that the assistant manager Andrew 
suffered with bipolar. So he sort of saw the signs of where Andrew would be, um, where maybe he'd be jolly, energetic, and wouldn't, and you would be able to get get a word in with him. And other times, him to be really just dark and depressed and and lethargic. You know, he saw the signs with Andrew, so and he saw the signs with me as well. So I was, so I was like. I wouldn't say I was shocked. I don't know. It was. It was hard. It was. It was a feeling that I couldn't really describe, really. Apart from feeling very confused, feeling very confused, and and in many ways, he he took on. He sort of took on like a father role. Because at that time, because by the, by that time, 2012, I had left home, and so he saw him. So at that time, he was so like, he was so like a father figure, and I mean he helped he helped me, you know. Um, Helped me go to a new GPs and ended up ended up trying to get diagnosed with bipolar, which I'll probably get on, which I'll get on. I think I'll get on to that now. So, so yeah, the road. So the road to that. Or say, hang on, no, 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 I think. I don't want to waffle on too long, but um, should I mention this? Well, I think it's important to mention it because because there have been there have been a, a lot of attempts. A few attempts to get diagnosed with bipolar at that at that time, and goal tops, the, the mental health uh, body, just they were just fucking complete fucking idiots, complete fucking idiots. You know, it's, they make it so incredibly hard. For you to get diagnosed with anything, you know, you know, you, you know, you got to go. To, basically, for anyone watching in the US or around the world, in the UK, you have to see the doc. You have to see the GP. Basically, tell them your symptoms. You know what symptoms you've had for the last two weeks or months. And if it, and if it sounds more severe, severe to them than depression. They'll refer you to the secondary healthcare um, body, so which in Newport was Gold Tops, and I went there twice, and just did not fucking get anywhere. Did not get anywhere. I said first, I was like, the f I seen this fucking stupid fucking social worker called Rachel who looked like a fucking she, she she looked she looked like a fucking a bloated fucking she looked like a bloat she had a face of a bloated fucking fish a face of a bloated fucking fish and a body of an unwanted sex doll that uh but the uh, yeah a bloated fish, unwanted sex doll. The type of sex doll that Del Boy was trying to that Del Boy was trying to get rid of in that fucking episode. Yes, bloated fish, unwanted sex doll. That's what she fucking looked like, you know. And not even, not even, not even a professional, a fucking social worker. What the fuck does a social worker know about fucking? 
diagnosing people with bipolar. You know, fucking ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. You know? You know, with a big fucking bally fucking... Big bally fucking eyes going... There's no mental illness. There's no mental illness. There's no mental illness. And you think, oh, fuck off, will you? You know? Unbelievable. Why do you need to see... You've already seen the doctor. This is what annoys me, right? You've already seen the doctor telling them, telling them about your symptoms, getting referred to a secondary healthcare unit, and you've got to fucking explain yourself again so, so you can see a psychiatrist eight weeks later. I don't understand that. If... You cut that out. You cut the middle man out. I probably would have got diagnosed back in 2012. I'm sure. I'm sure his eggs, his eggs are probably would have got diagnosed. But uh, I, I've, and of course, it led to me not being diagnosed straight away, and ending up getting into arrested all the time. Getting into a lot of fights led me to go to prison. Yes, prison. Because I'm an I'm an OG from the MPT, can't you see? One, two, three, yo, 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 I'm an OG, can't you see? I'm a crazy motherfucker from the MPT. You know. That led to me going to fucking prison. You know, or, or uh, you know, I, I assaulted a police officer. No, I should, I don't stand corrected. I, my body assaulted four police officers. My body assaulted four or five police officers. My body did. You know? You know, and that was fucking, that, that didn't feel, that, that felt surreal. But these, but at the same time, I sort of expected it to go to prison, you know, because I remember having a dream a couple of days before I went into prison, before going to court. I remember, I remember I was in shackles. I was in shackles. Basically, my arms whipped, whipped, just whipped to death, and they just looked like. It looked, it looked like a, it looked like they looked like they looked like a crimson river. That's how you know. That's how bad they looked. And I, I, I it was like a premon. It was in a way. It was like a premonition. But it, it, you could you could see it. You could see it happening because I was getting into so much trouble and arrests for assaulting people, getting into fights. You know, it, it seemed to be inevitable, really. It really, it really did. With all, with all the circumstances around it, you know, um, living in that hor living in that, living in that fucking horrible bed, sitting with all those, with three, with three other men, with, with three other fucking loonies and fucking that, and a fucking landlord that basically just, basically rip you off. You know, rip, ripped you off. And, and, and he looked like... I'll tell you what he looked like. He looked like a retarded version of John McEnroe. He really did. He was fucking... Fucking white hair and fucking angry. It's like... Oh! 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 Look what he's done to the... Look what he's done to the bed. He's super glued the bed to the floor. Oh! He super glued the bed to the floor. Oh! Yeah, he super glued the bed to the floor because... Because I was because one night I was on the fucking bed bouncing on top of the bed naked with a gas mask on and I broke the fucking wooden planks and I had to glue the bed to the floor. Or as James and Newport Mind Newport Mind would say, he was convinced the bed he was convinced the bed was floating. Your Honour Your Honour Jonathan was convinced that the bed was floating, so he super glued the bed to the floor. So yeah, going to prison was a, was an eye opener. It really was, and it 
it did it did feel surreal, but but it did it did but it but it did hit me really badly. It really did hit me, you know, because it, it felt like I, I, and it made me in a way bitter because I thought I'm trying I thought I'm trying my best, trying my damn hardest to get diagnosed. Nobody's listening to me. You know, I got the only the only person I got. I haven't got many people to talk to about it. You know, didn't have a lot of didn't have much of a didn't have much of a didn't have much of a supporting network. And it just it you know, and it just happened, you know. And but I managed to get through it. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. They wanted me. They did give me an opportunity to to, to go to leave my uh, to do my um, a shorter version of my sentence. And I was like, I and I said to the I said to the screw, I said, I don't want to be fucking coming out on a tag on house arrest on a tag for fucking four weeks. No, I'm not doing it. I'll do my fucking time, and that's it. And I didn't complain about it. I didn't complain once to any of the screws, you know. I was like, I'm going to do my time, and that's it. And I managed to occupy my mind by doing art and reading. That's, that's how I, that's how I um, occupy my time, so to speak. And then when I came out of prison... All oh, right, yeah, it's nearly going over fifty minutes. Right, let's talk another, another eight minutes. Okay, eight minutes, eight minutes. Right, so yeah, so when I came out of prison, a couple of months later, I actually got, I actually fucking finally got diagnosed. That's the problem, see, with bipolar. You've got to have something really bad to happen to get diagnosed. With some people. They have a manic episode and they get diagnosed straight away. But with me, it just it was just really complicated, really really complicated. So yeah, so I came out of prison a couple of months. Came out of prison, and a couple of months later, I actually I actually finally got diagnosed with bipolar in twenty thirteen. So that happened all in twenty thirteen. And um, and the fucking homeless officer, fucking now. Basically, sh treating me like a fucking criminal. It's like, oh, you've been to prison, have you? Oh, that's naughty, yes. You've been a naughty boy, yes. Oh, I don't think we'd house you. Oh, I think you'll have to go private, yes. Oh, 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 it's like a cross between Mary White and fucking Jimmy Savile. Mary Savile. Oh, we can't. I don't think we can house you. Oh, I don't think we can house you at all. You'll be naughty, yes. Yes, you'll be naughty, yes. yes. You'll be naughty, yes. yes. You think, oh. Having to deal with this, Mary fucking Webb. Oh, dear me. Put it this way, you wouldn't want to, put it this way, you wouldn't want, want to hear your homeless officer. You know, just fucking treating me like a fucking criminal. I'm thinking, I've just come out of fucking prison, right? I'm not a master criminal, right? I haven't killed anyone, I haven't raped anyone. I just, I just can't keep my anger in check and get into fights. And you're treating me like a fucking master, you treat me like a fucking, like a master fucking criminal. I'm thinking, I've paid... Listen, I've done my fucking time. I've paid my debt to society. Society, so why why are you treating me like this? You know, and it was very difficult to uh, interact with her. Very difficult, you know, because she was like, "Oh, you need. I think you should go. Oh, you is it? Oh, don't we get out with you? You might have to go private." I'm thinking, and he wasn't even down to her because I seen an assessment officer. Uh, a couple of weeks later, and, he said, and I told him my circumstances, you know, hoping to get diagnosed with bipolar, da, 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 and he was like, "Listen, what's done is done. You can you can go on the red you can go on the re uh, register, because we're Newport, 
housing, you've got to go on like a like a register, and you've got to fill in like you've got to fill like fill like a, a form in, and you end up like on bands. So bands determine how hot how they determine they determine where it's sort of like uh, bands are like. It's sort of like, um, they determine how high you go. So the higher band you're on, the more likely you're going to get more choices in, in flats or houses. So, so I ended up in band A because I was homeless. And then I ended up getting the flat then a couple of months later. So... So yeah, we've talked about prison, we talked about Salvation Army, talked about getting diagnosed, and that was a fucking relief. That was a relief when they got diagnosed, that was a fucking relief. That was a relief. So yeah, I think we'll just end with one more, so probably the, probably another defining moment was starting my YouTube channel. Because I never thought... I never thought I would start a YouTube channel, to be honest. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd be here talking and doing these type of videos. I never thought I'd do it. Because I lack the confidence. Because I... I mean, I still get nervous doing them now, but... Um, but I, I just lack the confidence. But... Doing the doing the YouTube channel has opened me, has opened uh, opened me up a bit. You know, I'm sort of more I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of open now, like a can like a tin of tuna now. Doing these YouTube uh, channels, uh, YouTube videos. You know, and and I've got to meet a lot of really fantastic people on the way. You know. You know, there's been some crazy fucking times on here as well. Fucking, fucking fem female, fucking female. Um, the females on, yeah, fucking hell. That was fucking. That that was fucking. The female attention. That was fucking insane. It's fucking insane. It was, and 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 it shocked. It did shock me. Like an electric bolt to the fucking heart. It just shocked me how, how much female attention that I did get. That I did get. Because I don't think I don't think I'm an attractive person at all. You know, I just think I'm. I think I'm just think I'm average. But uh, it was it was it was fucking fun, but at the same time very stressful. But. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy. I'm doing my YouTube channel. You know, there've been there've been a few bump, there's been a few potholes in, in the road, but you know, I, I could safely say on my hand on my heart that it's been overall a, a really incredible experience. You know, so yeah, I think I've fucking I waffled on enough. So. People that are watching this video that suffer with bipolar at this current moment in time, please stay safe. Make sure you've got a strong support network. You know, and look after yourselves. I know it's frustrating. It's fucking frustrating at the moment. But, you know, you will get through it. We'll all get through it. No matter how, no matter how fucking odd or unreal this this situation seems we will get through it we will get through it together we will get through it oh, oh. brother 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 so yeah thank you for watching see you in the next video or stream take care